Yo, hear me now. Good Watch morning, that show. Neil Vlogs. Today is one of those non-snowboarding vlogs. Just another normal day. I wanted to go shooting today, but uh, so much going on. I got to get in the office and I got to do a full sort of redo of my desk and editing setup in my home office. I got to ship out some packages. Uh, I sold this snowboard. Thank you very much. And I got to ship that off. Lots to do, lots to do. I uh, hope you can enjoy and hang out with me for a few minutes here as I sort of redo my whole space. <laughs> from the girls that was very nice I now have a desk that goes up and down a standing desk going up oh, look at that that's amazing still kind of moves a little bit I think I have to tighten a few more screws okay let's go down Oh yeah, solid, very solid. Now, look at that, cables, everything looks pretty tight, pretty nice, pretty nice. I love it. Here we go, one more time, going up. Oh yeah, standing desk, baby. Ooh. Oh, 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 yeah. on Amazon co.jp no top included use your own wood looks beautiful simple elegant raise and lower wow saiko desu ne kore wa nan de motto hayaku kawanagatta ってやつですね今スカンジナビアでこれが主流らしいですね立って仕事する本当は20分おき立って20分仕事して座って20分やってってなんかそれがいいらしいよそしてこれこの間プレゼントに出した MMU のキャップこれ当たった方からまだ連絡来ません TK さん TK さんこんなコメントくれましたね当たったんでメールアドレスあ家の住所メールアドレスに送ってください帽子送りますよ That is one ugly packing job. My apologies. ごめん。許してね。とりあえず板が発送します I bought a new board. 原点、ステック、チェイサー。原点、ステック、The Chaser、Shaped by Taro Tamai。Very, very nice. Gotta be careful taking the case off because the edges are sharp. You wanna cut your finger or the 
case. Woo! Look at that. Oh man, this is gonna be a beauty. Oh yeah. Whoa. <coughs> Beautiful board. Look at that. One of the widest boards in the lineup. Ooh, those edges are sharp. My GoPro batteries just keep on dying. They're so weak. I gotta buy new ones. Had to change the camera. Uh, Chaser, beautiful brand new board. Very excited about this. Look at that graphic, the color. It's quite nice. Really looking forward to riding this. The round tail. Very nice. Let's see if I can do a quick tune on this. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to do kind of a something on my quiver. I did one in Japanese the other day. I uh, just talked about all the different boards. I'm going to do a lineup and I've already got the title. I'm going to call it the ultimate Japao board quiver. That's the title. Don't steal my title. I'm going to make this real soon. It's going to have all the boards that I've collected over the years that are like what I think is the ultimate collection of boards for riding in Japao. And that's basically what the title is, right? The ultimate Japao board collection. Quiver, whatever you, well, I'll call it quiver. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that soon, uh, next week maybe. Try to get around to that. There's a lot going on. Uh, so, sorry, uh, I gotta get to this now. And then I gotta go to Niseko. Super busy, it's already three, gotta go. Whew. I just did a very quick kind of dulling of this area up here on both sides and the, the very tail. And then uh, with my little stone there, I just went over all the edges just to kind of take the, the super sharpness off that's on a new board like that. And now I'm gonna put a coat of wax on. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, man. I'm I'm not like a super super tune-up specialist, but uh, just little things I've learned over the years. Two-way cleaner pro from Gallium. This is like a it's a base cleaner, but it has like wax in it. I like that. I use that a lot. Uh, right now I'm using like a pretty basic all-around uh, wax. This is like an old Burton wax actually from years ago. And uh, ooh, those look slightly different. Which should I use? Ooh, Swix. Huh. See, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm not a pro at this at all, but I try to put love and care into the boards. You know what I mean? I think that's the most important thing. And try to get your wax temperatures fairly correct. And I don't like to waste a lot of wax. I like to use the old melt and slide on there, you know, so you don't have to, although this is a brand new board, so it probably helps to put a little extra in there. Uh, and then I use a wax paper, as always, to smooth it out. So, um, I'm gonna do this little thing, talk about all these different board shapes. Just, some people ask me, I think a lot of people are searching online for information. I ride uh, Gintin stick boards. I'm just gonna go for it here, because this is a new board, fuck it. And I ride uh, Field Earth boards. Those are my two favorite board brands here in Japan. I don't stick to just one. I like to ride different boards made by different people with different thought processes and different concepts. You know, they're all unique and individual and they all have something to offer, but I definitely have my favorites. Uh, the ones that, you know, suit my style of riding the best. And I think there's a lot of preconceived kind of notions and mistakes that people make when they're, you know, getting into like snow surfing sort of style of riding and these kind of board designs, really wider boards or softer boards or more surfy boards. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of relearning that people have to do before they really get it. Um, so next time when I make this little uh, TV, not TV show, this little YouTube episode, a little vlog episode about the quiver, those are some of the things I think I'll talk about just to kind of help break down some of those ideas and Maybe break some of those preconceived notions, you know? 
In fact, I, here's a good example. I ran into a guy, I was at the Gentan Stick showroom, and there was a, a foreigner, and he was looking, he talked to me for a minute, and he said, oh, I've got the Jeremy Jones uh, Hovercraft, which is copied off of the Genten Stick Manta Ray board. And he knew that. And he's like, yeah, you know, I was riding that board, but it, it's just like, it's just kind of squirrely, like there's not enough, it's not strong enough, or it's not stiff enough. And uh, I was like, whoa, kind of shocked me because I the hovercraft to me is like a super stiff, like, I mean, the manta ray is quite stiff to me. And the hovercraft, I think, is even stiffer, you know? And for, like, man, you must be going, like, either super fast and be, like, an incredibly strong rider or something's going on. And I, I think what it actually is is a lot of people they ride a stiff board and they're going like oh this thing's out of control it's like it's not you know it's not stiff enough it's not it's not powerful enough board for me and i think it's actually a lot of times the reverse like they're not able to handle the stiffness of the board and I, i'm like that i'm like i get on a stiff board i'm like ah oh, like careening out of control down the mountain but i ride a soft board with a soft tail and get surfy with it and then I'm in complete control and it's fine. I think there's a lot of people out there who have that whole thinking backwards, you know? They think the board needs to be crazy stiff to support them as they fly out of control down the mountain. And it's the reverse, man. You need to have like the softest, if you want to snow surf and you want to ride powder and enjoy it, you know, the only people who can take a, a snow surf type of board, make it really stiff, and be successful with that is people like Mads Janssen, who has the Fly Fisk shaped board with Genten Stick. That thing is stiff. It's shaped kind of like this, it's a little bigger, and it's rock hard. I would never ride that. That would be impossible. But that's Mads Janssen. He's like, his forefathers were Vikings. The guy's like a monster, you know? You know, don't compare yourself with Mads Janssen. I would never do that. I'm like, no way, man. Mads Janssen, I've, I watched him do one of the largest, I think the world record straight jump air. I don't know if it was ever beaten since then. In Norway, like a long time ago. That was insane. The guy is a monster. So, then you have someone like uh, Olmu, who uh, I did a little vlog with a while back and he rides the big fish for Genten Stick. And his Genten Stick big fishes are actually like softer than the ones they sell. He had some made specifically like super, super soft, like noodly soft. And you watch him ride and you would never know it. It's like, he goes fast, he carves like a demon and his boards are super soft. So I think we're coming to that point now where a lot of people are able to ride softer boards, softer boots, softer bindings and be super controlled and, you know, do what they need to do. Especially, you know, here in Japan with the conditions we have, the snow quality we have, and uh, the mountain, the aspects, you know, it's not so steep. You know, I think if you get on a really steep mountain and you need to really be dropping speed constantly and rapidly, like in Alaska or in Mount Baker, or you have a heavier snowpack, it's steeper, you're going to need a board that can handle that and that's where you need that stiffness. So my concept in my talk is going to be quite specific to this area, but that's why I said Japao, man. If you want to come and ride Japao and snow surf it, I'm going to show you some of the boards I think are like the best in the world for it. And they're all right here in my room. Ha! <clears throat> but I've been collecting them, you know, it's taken like 35 years, so... You know, don't feel like it's going to happen overnight. It's taken me a long time to get to this point and a long time to buy all these boards. That's something I'd ride more. I would ride more brands. I would ride Moss and I would ride, uh, what else is there? There's a variety of other like Japanese brands that are doing really interesting things in board design and creating unique stuff. And I would love to ride them all, but it's a monetary issue. It's like, how many boards can you buy every year 
before your wife says, why do you need another snowboard? You know what I mean? Like she's super considerate and super accepting of what I do and all this stuff that I buy. But you know, I gotta buy boards for my kids too. <sighs> so usually it's like one board a year. I usually add one board a year to the collection. And if someone wants to send me a board that I can ride and test for free, I'm not going to say no. Of course, I'm not an idiot. So, that's how it usually works. Brand new board, as you can see, super clean. Ain't no garbage coming out of that thing. Wow. Well, that was my rush wax job. Oh, this thing is going to be beauty. Woo. Ah. Um, hold on a second. Uh, oh, you can't see that, can you? I got a little uh, cassette tape. <laughs> sort of. It's a... Uh, it's a little stomp pad for the for the board there. I picked that up, a little Dakine stomp pad cassette tape. Thought that was kind of cool. It's got to go right over Tato Sun's name. That ain't cool. Damn. Um, binding. Binding. I ride these outside, outside. The, the widest stance possible. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's me. I can't ride the narrow stance. Some people surf style kind of riding a pretty narrow stance, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, well, damn, I guess we can go here. And we can put one more here. We're going to do two cassette tapes. Or we could do it that way. Yeah, the party mix. Okay, let's do that. Boyaka! Nice! I gotta have my stop pad. These boards are slippery, man. Okay. I think that's uh, that's enough talk for today. Still got to get out to Niseko. I don't know if this vlog will continue all the way there or not. But you got to see a little bit of what it did today. Man, that desk, I'm so pumped on the raising, lowering, standing desk. Thank you to Glenn, who told me about that and showed me his. All right, see you guys later.